when I think about the previous CBI movies, the best aspect about all of them is that there is a very clear narrative. That is, in the first movie, there is an Omna Kula case, right? A girl who supposedly committed suicide and her father and her sister has doubts about it. Hence, they, you know, uh, submit a request to the Supreme Court to uh, get CBI to uh, investigate the case. The second movie, a famous actress uh, supposedly commits suicide inside a locked room. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of, uh, you know, interest, media interest and other interest around the case. CBA investigates the case. The third one, again, you know, uh, uh, supposedly the murderer, uh, uh, actually a hardcore murderer, kills seven people. He's caught, he's uh, sentenced to be hanged. And at the last minute, you know, he's a change of heart and, you know, he requests for a confession and he tells Sedra Mayer that one of those murders out of the seven was not committed by him. And of course, Sedra Mayer and his team then investigate the case. The fourth uh, case, personally for me, that was the most interesting one because, you know, there, are, they had, there were supernatural elements that needed to be understood. So for the first time, Sedra Mayer had a case where there were certain supernatural elements to it. At the same time, a girl who is found murdered in a house, you know, that has rumors of certain, you know, supernatural, supernatural activities. So again, very interesting, very clear. So when it comes to all these cases, there is clarity. You, as an audience, you know what exactly the case is about, where the confusion is, where the conflict is. And again, of course, Sedaram and, and, and his team are investigating the case. Now, when it comes to this latest movie, CBFI, The Brain, I, it's difficult for me to come, you know, present a one-liner over there. Um, and that's the problem with this movie. There is a lack of clarity. As an audience member, when I was sitting and watching this movie, when it got to the interval point, you know, there was a lot of confusion in my mind. Like, you know, what case are they, you know, investigating, you know, because there is a, you know, in the flash, you know, there is a flashback sequence and all and, you know, certain elements about the stories being told, uh, you know, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, disconnect. As an audience member, I was kind of bored in the first half because I was like, f finding it difficult to really understand which or what case or what's the conflict or what the issue is. CBFI, the brain, feels like a movie that needed a little more thought and a little more development before it was decided to be made into a movie. And there lies the problem. CBFI, the brain, is the latest installment in the CBA franchise, directed by K. Madhu, written by S.N. Swami, starring our megastar Mamuti. It's probably a world record, a movie franchise that has been running for four decades with the same director, same script writer and of course the same actor. However, unlike the previous CBA movies, this movie feels underdeveloped and convoluted. I was almost bored in the first half of this movie. You know, th there was a lot happening on screen. As I mentioned in the introduction, you know, with the previous movies, it's very clear on what the case is and what needs to be investigated. Here, there are several elements introduced in the first half. To explain the plot without spoilers, a couple of murders take place. Each victim has various connections with each other. However, there is nothing to explain the reason behind their murders and for that reason, the state police is stuck with their investigation. Therefore, a request is made to the court and then court orders CBI to investigate the case. Mamboti is back as Edurama CBI after 17 years and it feels like just yesterday he was playing the role. He slips very easily into the skin of the character of Mayer, as well as those half-sleeved shirts along with holding his hands behind his back and then walking in that iconic walk that we all know about along with the BGM in the background. However, nostalgia can only get you so far. The movie needs to be able to stand on its own and that's where it falters. A host of characters are introduced in the first half. It is so difficult to keep track. Sometimes when they go back and revisit a particular character or a scene, it's difficult to understand who they're talking about. About. However, the second half is more better as you are able to understand the plot a little more and able to follow the investigation. And finally, the climax of the movie is a saving grace because this climax is played out differently in comparison to the other movies. Usually what happens, say the guy comes in, identifies the killer, then he tells, you know, this one's the reason, blah, 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 you know, and they catch him. This is not that straightforward. There is an attempt to almost follow that formula, but uh, the killer is quite smart, uh, wherein he or she he or she uh, smartly uh, argues with Sedra Mayer saying that, you know, where is the proof? And, you know, it almost looks like Sedra Mayer has lost, you know, and, you know, he uh, lowers his head in shame and confusion. He almost leaves and at that last minute, something strikes him and 
yeah of course yeah. the reveal another reveal is happening so it's more than the killer it's more about how the killer or you know how it can be proven that the the person who they caught at the end is the killer or is the person responsible so uh, that was i think the saving grace of this movie however to get to that point there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of plot there's also subplots uh, you know various characters introduced in fact when i look back in this movie i think half an hour of this movie could have been cut off you know there are so many unnecessary scenes but that's the way they wanted to present this movie and here we have it All right, final thoughts and rating. Uh, the main thing over here, and that's what I was worried about also, the direction of K. Madhu and the script writing of S. N. Swami. You know, they are movie makers from a different era. Back in the eighties, nineties, some of these ideas worked. You know, but now you know they need to update themselves on how certain scenes are presented. You know how the narration or the plot points are presented, things like that. It uh, it feels extremely old-fashioned in certain sequences. For example, there is a character in this movie simply for the sake of comedy, and uh, you know if he's completely cut out, also it doesn't make a difference to the plot. Uh, maybe to justify his role, in the end, his sort of accidental one word when he's talking to someone on the phone. is heard by uh, sedra mayer and suddenly he connects something with something and it doesn't really add much to it and this character has a bunch of scenes at least six or seven scenes i counted uh, unnecessary completely unnecessary and that's the main issue over here there are several unnecessary scenes uh, in this movie you know it doesn't make sense uh, and i want one thing i wanted to say was that jagdish character bikram they handled it very sensitively and uh, very gracefully uh, you know the whole theater clapped when they finally saw jagdish you know it's just a quick 5 uh, minute scene you know but it had a certain impact uh, to the story and to the case so you know and uh, it's very emotional also because there was a time when jagdish was probably the most energetic uh, actor or person you can see on screen along with the other actors so here he is just you know sitting down and not able to talk but he's smiling and uh, but he gives a very vital clue through his actions and j- gestures uh, you know it felt a little emotional in fact sedramer also in that moment gets a little emotional and it's wonderful to see those scenes i feel like you know essence for me when he was writing this character he he had a couple of good ideas Uh, for example like i said uh, there are moments in this movie that feels like sedramer has lost the investigation or it feels like sedramer also is not sure of himself there are a few moments like that which is why i think this movie had certain good ideas but it's underdeveloped and uh, Uh, and it's extremely old fashioned or old uh, old school style of presentation of the investigative thrillers you know you have a lot of scenes where certain people are reacting when uh, for example sedram is confronting them or asking questions he's like you know they start looking you know like this like this like this and all it's almost like back in the 80s suddenly for us to be like oh this could person could be the killer oh this person could do something it's very amateurish in this day and age you know Uh, you know they look like this uh, suddenly there's a different b- music in the background uh, yeah it just doesn't make sense and of course our uh, <laughs> chako played by mukesh also is in this movie but very very it's like he didn't have a lot of dates to give so you know he decided like i'll appear in a few scenes then i'll you know i'll leave so it's like he appears in one scene then he's not there for some time then he appears in another scene then he's not there for some time in the climax now it's like where is mukesh where is chako what happened to <laughs> i again uh, it doesn't make sense in fact this movie i'll tell uh, as far as mammootty is you know if someone to support him throughout this entire movie as an assistant or someone the it was ranjit panikar's character it's a good role for him uh, i think he was playing the character name was balagobal so uh, he was a good uh, character right from the start you know he's also senior officer uh, so he takes charge of the team when sedramayar is not around so he's kind of you know heading the investigation when sedramayar is not around but sedramayar again is the main boss so he's a sedramayar at this point in stage you know he's the boss like they say that you know they all report to him so you know that's a good thing uh, i also felt like you know since we are revisiting this character after 17 years they could have made him older you know his his hair is as black as ever <laughs> and uh, they can they could have done an older version of him uh, 
I don't I don't understand why they didn't do that because Bishma Varuvam he was playing an older character and it really worked you know everyone liked it for that so in this movie yes he's playing a senior officer to all of them he, it could be that he could be u- using dai but the point here is again why can't they show an older character uh, it's absolutely fine it could have been uh, someone closer to retirement and, and it would have been a great story to it because K Madhu and S N Swami are both you know are in that old age so for them to kind of bring out a movie that uh, was based of a character that they did what 30 40 years ago you know it's it would be very interesting for these old people to actually compete with the, the new gen movies that are coming out or the new actors or the new directors whatever you want to call it right it would be interesting so they could have written the cbs story from that perspective uh but nothing of that is here it's just you know there's a case that needs to be solved uh but again the story that needs that was told and how it was told very convoluted very underdeveloped uh it needed more work i think for my rating i will give it 2.5 out of 5 and that 0.5 is just for mammutis uh, sedra mayer he is as good as ever i would say this is an underdeveloped convoluted cba movie that is saved by an interesting climax and of course it's leading man watch it in movie theater watch it in ott watch it whenever you can doesn't matter that's my opinion uh that's it guys that's my review if you like this review hit the thumbs up icon and of course subscribe to my channel for more reviews thank you guys for watching bye